When two fellow convicts decided to dig up a freshly buried body, they didn't expect the buried woman to be alive. They got the fright of their lives and what happened next is alarming. Quentin and Joe could hardly believe their fortune that night. As they had hoped, the peaceful-looking lady lying in the casket was laden with the most valuable jewelry, including a beautiful ruby necklace. They had taken a risk, and it had definitely paid off. Quentin took out their knapsack and opened it, whilst Joe began to take the jewelry off the dead woman's body. But when he reached out for the necklace, something completely unexpected happened. The woman's eyes shut open, and she took a massive gasp for air. The men recoiled back with absolute fright. They couldn't believe their eyes. The woman then sat straight up panting for air and looking frantically around her. The men were horrified. Why on earth was she alive? Had she come back to life? Was she going to cause trouble for them? They had been so careful. Before they could react, she started trying to get out of the casket. She was very disoriented clearly having no idea where she was. She then reached out to Quentin, asking him who he was, where she was, and how she had gotten there. Quentin battled to find his voice. After a few seconds of astonished silence, Quentin started telling her how they had come to find her lying in a casket, buried under six feet, or two meters of dirt. Quentin and Joe had gotten into the line of grave digging out of pure necessity. After they were released from prison for minor offenses, they realized that no one seemed willing to give them a second chance, and so they turned to a dishonest method of getting a source of income. For them, it meant stealing the valuables off of freshly buried bodies. They weren't proud of it, but they figured they weren't hurting anyone, and the risk of being caught was extremely low, especially if they were discreet enough and left with the grave looking exactly as it had looked before. So, on a lookout for an interesting freshly dug grave in the paper, they stumbled upon the woman's obituary. She was exactly the kind of victim they were looking for. A very wealthy business owner that was bound to have a ton of valuables on her. They could make a small fortune if they dug her up and stole all her valuables. So they had staked out the cemetery mentioned in the obituary and found her grave that very night. After Quentin was done explaining all that, he sheepishly offered the woman to return the woman's jewelry to her. But the woman didn't seem so concerned about her jewelry. Instead, she just sat down on the ground, exacerbated by what she had just heard. The convicts stood nervously nearby, waiting to see what she would do next. They were concerned for their own future, as the woman held their fate in her hands. But they also felt compassion for her and for what she was going through, waking up with two strange men looting her own grave. They offered her some water, and she gladly accepted. It was clear she had been through quite an ordeal. The convicts were anxious to know how on earth she had come back to life or if she had ever been dead to begin with, and that begged the question of how she had been buried in the first place. After some time, Joe eventually worked up the courage to ask her how she thought she had ended up buried in a grave. He offered to take her home or call someone for her. What he got in return was not quite the reaction he expected. The woman seemed to get a surge of energy from the water and the cue questions. She refused their offer to call someone and began to grow visibly very angry. She relayed her last memory of her husband offering her some tea after they had a massive fight. It had been just a few days prior, she had suspicions that her husband was cheating on her. Because of her busy life running a million dollar company, she had realized her husband had had an easy time running around behind her back with other women. She had yet to prove it though, and she felt the need to confront him about it. After all, she had always been faithful despite numerous opportunities to stray. She was wealthy, she was smart, and she was beautiful. So she needed to know why he had betrayed her. Of course, he had denied it completely. She was really mad, but couldn't help but want to believe him. In some ways, she felt she was still sincerely in love with him. So after he had managed to calm her down, he offered to make her tea, which she gladly accepted, only that was the very last thing she remembered doing. There had to have been some kind of poison in the tea to kill her or make her appear dead something that allowed her to be declared dead and buried alive. Quentin and Joe were gobsmacked by what they were hearing. They weren't strangers to money being the motive for crazy acts, but they couldn't get over how she was still alive. Had the man intended her to be buried alive? Or was that just a mistake? Nonetheless, he was going to get the fright of his life when his supposedly dead wife walked through the door. 
the woman turned to the men and asked them for some help in confronting her husband in return for a favor from her in the future. The men, feeling like they didn't really have much of a choice in the matter and scared of going back to jail, happily obliged. They went to a local motel and set the plan into motion. The woman approached the police and told them her story. She voluntarily left out the part about Quentin and Joe robbing her grave. Instead, she told them that they had saved her after she had woken up in the casket and started banging on it and screaming her lungs out. The police were just as horrified to hear her story as the convicts had been. As much as they had evidence of her funeral and burial, there was no proof that her husband had done exactly what she accused him of. They needed to get him to confess. So the woman devised a plan where Quentin and Joe would approach her ex-husband, asking for jobs to work in the garden. From there, they would hang around and listen in to conversations he had with whoever came to the house. It was the perfect plan. How it unfolded seemed unreal. Her plan worked wonders as her husband gave Quentin and Joe gardening work that allowed them to eavesdrop. For the most part, the conversations they heard were boring and obnoxious with people he called friends. It was clear though that his visitors were just there because of his wealth. But then one day, they had a breakthrough. The man's mistress came over and was hanging around the pool. It was there that a very heated conversation broke out about how he had poisoned his ex-wife to be with her and that she should be grateful. The convicts got this on record with the help of some microphones and quickly went back to the woman and the police. What happened next was simply alarming. The woman returned to her home for the very first time. The police and convicts were waiting to back her up if things turned bad. They just needed to see his reaction to her being alive to catch the man with finality. So she walked around the house to the pool where her ex and his mistress were frolicking. The minute he laid his eyes on her, his whole demeanor changed. His mistress screamed and fainted on the spot, while his reaction was extremely different. In a split second, he reached down and grabbed the gun he had hidden under one of the chairs. He pointed and shot at the woman as quickly as he could. Luckily, she was anticipating this and returned fire with her own gun. She caught him square in the shoulder, causing him to collapse to the ground in pain. He kept crying out that she should be dead. He was horrified that she was still alive. At the sound of the shots fired, the police came running in to handle the situation. They arrested the horrid man and took him away. The woman turned to her house and let out a giant sigh. She got him. He was going to pay for what he did to her. She wasn't going to let it go that easily. As for Quentin and Joe, she offered them jobs as her very own private security, which they gladly accepted. She felt they had given her a second chance at life, and she was happy to return the favor. What a crazy story. Can you imagine going to a funeral to find out the person is still alive? What would you have done if your partner did this to you? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Until next time.